Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Lifespan Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and impact of emerging science and technology. As 2023 continues, so does new research into rejuvenation, regeneration, and restoration. Let's see what's been done to reverse age-related diseases in January. Starting off with our research roundup. If you want to get more exercise, you may want to try a silly walk. Researchers have found that imitating the walking style of Mr. Teabag from the famous Monty Python sketch about the Ministry of Silly Walks can count as high-intensity exercise. The researchers asked 13 healthy volunteers to recreate Mr. Teabag's silly walk while wearing gear that measured their CO2 emissions, which is a common method of assessing exercise intensity. In men, the average energy expenditure during the teabag walk reached 8.7 MET, or resting metabolic equivalents, which is on par with cycling and jogging. In women, it was 7.1 MET. Anything above 7 MET usually qualifies as high-intensity exercise. Each minute of teabag walking resulted in burning an average of 8 more kilocalories in men and 5.2 in women compared to participants' regular gaits. Previous research suggests that as few as 75 minutes of vigorous physical activity per week robustly reduce disease and mortality risks. This threshold can be achieved by simply doing your daily walking teabag style. Also, another recent study showed that even short bursts of vigorous activity, a minute or two in duration, can have an effect comparable to much longer bouts. An additional important component sets silly walking apart from most other types of exercise, increasing its attractiveness as a potential anti-aging intervention. Research has shown that laughter is associated with lower all-cause and cardiovascular mortality. The scientists reported high levels of laughter from the silly walk participants and noted that they were all smiling after removing the face mask used during the study. This was a small study, but if you're looking to increase your physical activity, adding a silly walk could do the trick. Moving on, the permeability of the epithelial intestinal barrier is known to increase with age. The resulting condition, also known as leaky gut, can be exacerbated by dietary, lifestyle, and environmental factors, such as alcohol consumption. Recent studies have shown that intestinal contents can become potent immune system triggers in the bloodstream. This is how a leaky gut causes the persistent systemic inflammation that drives multiple diseases of aging. In this new study, the researchers investigated the deleterious effects of ethanol on gut permeability in mice and whether they can be alleviated by the NAD precursor nicotinamide riboside, or NR. Over the course of the experiment, mice fed an ethanol-rich diet experienced intestinal barrier deterioration. However, in mice who also received NR, this effect was largely abolished. Tight junctions, the constructions that glue cells together, are an important component of the intestinal barrier and a significant weak spot. Their disintegration is a major cause of leaky gut. In this study, the levels of tight junction proteins were decreased by ethanol, while in the ethanol NR group, those levels remained on par with controls. Analysis showed that the structures of intestinal villi and of epithelial cells were deformed in the ethanol group but remained just as healthy in the NR group as in controls. Recent studies show that energy homeostasis is important for tight junction formation between intestinal epithelial cells. The researchers confirmed that NAD levels were greatly depleted in those cells by ethanol, but elevated by NR supplementation, amazingly above those of healthy controls. Levels of ATP, the molecule considered cellular energy currency, showed a similar dynamic. Since most of the energy production in cells occurs in mitochondria, The researchers also analyzed mitochondrial health. Two functional mitochondrial enzymes that were quantified were reduced by ethanol but rescued by NR supplementation. After noticing that suppressing SIRT1 expression abolished the restorative effect of NR, the researchers concludes that NR counters the effects of ethanol by promoting intestinal mitochondrial biosynthesis in a SIRT1-dependent manner. Leaky gut has been implicated in inflammaging, making the integrity of the intestinal barrier an important target for geroscientists. This study shows that NAD supplementation through NR dramatically alleviates leaky gut symptoms caused by ethanol, which in humans is usually a result of alcoholic beverage consumption, but these results can probably be extrapolated to other causes. 
Scientists publishing in Nature have found that compounds produced by some types of gut bacteria can influence dopamine levels in the brain and, as a result, might influence motivation to go on a morning run. We tend to think of ourselves as single organisms, but every human body serves as a home to trillions of bacteria of various species. Until recently, those microscopic squatters were not getting the attention they deserve. During recent years, there has been a boom in microbiome studies, linking the inhabitants of our guts to neurogenerative and cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and inflammaging. Exercise is one of the most potent anti-aging interventions known to humans. Most people know they should exercise, but motivation remains a serious issue. The reasons for this variability in motivation are poorly understood and usually cataloged under the vague label of personality traits. However, this study suggests that those differences might have a lot to do with the microbiome. The researchers started with genetically diverse mice and meticulously phenotyped them, accumulating thousands of data points per animal. They learned that genetic differences played only a minor role in the variability in both voluntary and forced exercise capacity. They then used machine learning to identify variables that were strongly predictive of this capacity. Interestingly, the results of an analysis to identify bacterial strains in the microbiome were among the most well-correlated with endurance. The researchers then performed a series of microbiome depletion and transplantation experiments. Sweeping microbiotal abladian with broad-spectrum antibiotics led to a decrease in exercise capacity. When the microbiome was transplanted, the performance levels were highly correlated between the donor and the recipient. The scientists then continued to experiment on genetically identical mice to exclude factors other than microbiome composition. They tried various narrowly acting antibiotics and found that only neomycin had not impaired physical performance. The researchers then decided to further investigate the motivational pathway. They found that in neurons located in a part of the brain central to movement control, levels of dopamine, a major regulator of the drive for physical activity, were elevated by exercise in mice with intact microbiota, but not in antibiotic-treated mice, except those treated with neomycin. Those post-exercise spikes in striatal dopamine levels were restored by the same microbiome transplants that had improved exercise performance, but not by other types of bacteria. How exactly did the gut communicate with the brain? The results suggest that fatty acid amides produced by some types of bacteria trigger signaling that ultimately results in increased dopamine levels. The researchers were able to engineer a fatty acid amides-producing string of E. coli and monocolonizing the mice with this strain rescued their exercise performance. The bottom line is that when there are few fatty acid amides producing bacteria in the gut, the exercise-associated dopamine surge seems to be reduced, leading to diminished motivation to exercise. This study increases our understanding of the diversity of microbiota and their importance for human health and fitness. If the researchers are correct and if these results translate to human beings, people might soon be able to increase their motivation to exercise by consuming specific strains of bacteria or fatty acid amides directly. That's it for our research roundup. You can find more on these and other stories on our website at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. In January, Life Noggin released three new videos, one exploring the idea that you are what you eat, one discussing what it would be like to live at the bottom of the ocean, and one clarifying the distinction between chronological age and biological age. Here's a taste of that last one. You know your favorite color. Mine's blue. Your favorite snack. Mine is pizza bagels. And you know your age. Or do you? Vsauce. My- whoops, nope, wrong channel. Hey there! Welcome to Life Noggin. Are you sure you know how old you are? I can trace my origin back to the exact moment the creator made me, March 23rd, 2013 at 5 to 7 p.m. And of course, I incubated for a year until my dad decided this whole idea wasn't stupid. But figuring out your true age is a lot more complicated for you humans. There's your chronological age, which is how long you've been alive for and what you use for birthday celebrations. But there's also your biological age, which is how old your body and cells actually are. This reflects your health and can indicate your life expectancy, but it's more difficult to determine. Biological age is a measure of how fast you're aging by taking into account age-related changes and damages that occur inside your body as you get older. The more changes and damages, the older your biological age. Your biological age can be similar to your chronological age or remarkably different. It depends on aspects of your lifestyle like 
diet, stress, exercise and sleeping habits, and living environment. I realize that if you're a teenager, almost all of those are bad. But in order to find out your biological age, scientists use biological markers, which are often referred to as biomarkers. Triangle Bob, stop sniffing the biomarkers. Biomarkers are any characteristic of the body that you can measure, like blood pressure or the results of an x-ray. But there are certain ones related to the different processes that occur as you get older that scientists can use to determine someone's biological age. One of them is telomere length. Telomeres are found at the ends of your chromosomes, but each time the cell divides, they shorten. So an older cell has much shorter telomeres than a brand new one. But this can be difficult to measure. Another age-related biomarker is DNA methylation, also known as your epigenetic clock. While a genetic change alters your DNA and affects what chemicals your genes produce, an epigenetic change determines whether or not a gene is turned on. This can be caused by your lifestyle. One way epigenetic changes happen is by DNA methylation. This is a process where methyl molecules are added to your DNA which turns the genes on or off. As you age, certain genes become methylated that would be better off not, while other genes lose their methyl groups that would be better suited with them. This results in things like gray hair, wrinkles, and joint pain. Everything a 30-year-old looks forward to. Studies have found that patterns of DNA methylation, which can be measured from a blood sample, accurately predicted chronological age. And many researchers and companies have used this method to develop their own epigenetic clock or wellness test where you can discover exactly exactly how old you are. At the very least, it could be an excuse to have another party. Happy 2785th birthday, Triangle Bob. His body's been through a lot. In January, Lifespan News announced a new co-host, welcoming Emmett Short to the team. Emmett will join Ryan on the hosting team, and Ryan will continue to write, produce, and edit the show as well. Emmett brings a bit of his background in comedy to the table, which you can get a sense of in this episode. Senison and Cells and Dad Jokes are both hallmarks of aging. They're outdated, irritating, and both make you die a little inside. But new research has given scientists fresh insight that can help us fight back against these destructive relics. Well, senescent cells. Yeah, there's been very little progress on dad jokes. Welcome to Lifespan News. I'm Emmett Short. Today we're talking about new research into senescent cells that found that they can adhere to neighboring cells, eventually ripping apart and leaving fragments of themselves inside their victims. Reminds me of an ex-girlfriend. Anyway, learning how they work could help us figure out the relationship between senescent cells and cancer. Cellular senescence is central to aging. That's, that's actually the sentence I used to do a mic check. Cellular senescence is central to, we're good? Okay, so in this new preprint study, scientists marked one out of every thousand cells with a fluorescent protein. So what they found was pretty amazing. After a few days, tiny fluorescent dots started to appear. Like the cells were already tiny, but these new dots were even tinier. And they turned out to be cellular fragments attached to the membranes of other cells. Time lapses showed how the cells moved around and bumped into each other and contacts between non-senescent cells, so healthy cells, were brief and ended without damaging either cell. But if at least one of the cells was senescent, they sometimes bonded together. Then, as the cells eventually moved apart, the senescent cell was torn, leaving a part of itself attached to the other cell, as you can see in this actual video taken with a microscope. The fragments began appearing just three days after the induction of senescence. And by day four, there were an average of 10 to 12 fragments per senescent cell. It's like they sweat super glue and keep bumping into things. It's not ideal. Making things worse, the fragments exhibited spinning, projecting, and retracting arms or crawling like behavior. Yikes! It's like walking dead inside your body. The researchers also wanted to see what effects the fragments have on the cells. So they added these fragments to liver cells and it increased their growth rate. And in 3D culture, cancer cells with the fragments became more active and invaded the gel and formed branches, which is super scary, but at least we understand it now a little better, which gets us one step closer to figuring out how to control it. Now, I know I framed senescent cells in a pretty bad light here, but this is not the whole story, okay? You may be thinking, 
senescent cells bad and want to cancel them from your bodies. But just like most things in life, it's a little more nuanced than that. There have been other studies that have demonstrated some benefits of senescence. So even down to the cellular level, there's good and evil in all of us. And we're going to need more information before we know how we should respond. And when we get that information, we're not going to keep it to ourselves. We'll make a video right away. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. I'm Emmett Short, and we'll see you next time on Lifespan News. Other episodes of Lifespan News include one revealing what may be the optimal dose of NMN and another discussing a variation of the already healthy Mediterranean diet that may further combat visceral fat. Visit the Lifespan News YouTube channel to find these and more. Closing things out with a quick news nugget. Vita Dow, a decentralized organization funding early-stage longevity research and biotech startups, has announced the successful closing of a $4.1 million funding round dedicated to financing future longevity projects and furthering its commercialization and licensing strategy for IP NFT assets. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related diseases. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about us on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast.